Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll talk about programmable data planes and the role of an intermediate representation in compiling high-level languages like P4 down to various hardware targets. First, let's talk about why we need a programmable data plane. Emerging data plane devices enable increasingly flexible control on how they process packets. In terms of defining custom packet header formats, altering the number of stages in a packet processing pipeline, adding state such as tables to various stages in the pipeline, and specifying new data plane functions for packet processing. The fixed nature of OpenFlow devices makes it hard to add new protocols or remove protocols if they're no longer needed. Recently, many new protocols are being developed for serving different applications in data center and enterprise networks, including GRE, VXLAN, and BFD. There's a need to rapidly deploy these protocols in the network without waiting for new OpenFlow specification and chips to spin up, which may take months, if not years, before they're actually deployed in practice. Therefore, there's a need to have some type of programmability in the network devices to allow for rapid deployment of these protocols. The data plane device should be able to operate on arbitrary packet locations and provide a means for specifying packet operations using high-level network policies. For example, the policy shown here tells the data plane to read VXLAN and internal Ethernet headers from the packet. Compare the IP in VXLAN with some IPX, and if there's a match, it removes the VXLAN header and internal Ethernet headers from the packet. If there's a match, it removes the VXLAN header from the packet and forwards it through port 0 if the internal ETH header matches. Given such programmable devices, the challenge then is how to compile these high-level policies to such variable targets. Now, the previous slide just showed one example, but we expect that network programmers will organize their programs into libraries and composable modules that will likely be reusable and may be written in entirely differing high-level languages. Programmers may use these libraries to write more complex packet processing programs by composing modules into a single packet processing pipeline. Programmers thus need mechanisms for compiling these modules to a single hardware target. To understand the motivation for an intermediate representation, it helps to think about the history of programming languages and how compilers for those developed. Having multiple high-level languages can make it difficult to achieve direct compilation to a hardware target. For example, with languages like C, Java, and Python, compiler designers face the issue of how to compile these languages to different targets. Instead of compiling each language directly to a given target, designers developed an intermediate representation that acted as a sweet spot that divided the compiler tasks into two phases, a front end and a back end. An intermediate representation needs to be both language and target independent. It should be expressive enough to be produced by a language specific front end, and it must be functional enough to produce layouts for a diverse set of hardware targets. The IR should permit the compiler to optimize packet processing pipelines using both target specific and target agnostic optimizations for area, power, or latency and also optimize the layout of the resulting packet processing program. We expect that programmers will organize their policies into libraries and modules, possibly written in different languages, such as P4 or protocol oblivious forwarding. These libraries might be accessible through public repositories like GitHub. A network programmer can then take these modules and compose them to write more complex policies and install them on a data plane device. Unfortunately, installing such policies is not straightforward and there are many challenges and issues. For example, an access control list might only be operating on an IP source and destination, in which case the rest of the fields are unused and shouldn't be part of the final policy. However, a naive compilation will add these fields into the data plane. Thus, we need mechanisms to ensure that such redundancy is removed from the final policy and that the policy is efficiently compiled to the underlying target. NetASM is an intermediate representation that acts as a narrow waist between the languages that are beginning to emerge, such as P4, Click, and Concurrent Netcore, and a growing diversity of targets or backends. It enables a common platform for writing optimizations to these programmable devices. It provides an abstract cost model, persistent state for storing information across packets, and in order to efficiently map these policies to different targets, NetASM provides several modes of execution that can be applied together to implement complex execution paths through various devices. The language has 23 primitive instructions for implementing these network policies. NetASM thus acts as a common intermediate layer 
between these higher level languages in which modules may be specified and lower level data plane targets. Having this intermediate representation improves the quality of code using optimization such as code motion and dead code elimination. And using NetASM, a compiler can perform conventional data and control flow analyses. The compiler can also use a target agnostic or target specific cost model to apply such optimizations. And the optimizations may be targeted to improve metrics including area, latency, and throughput. Optimizations include target agnostic optimizations like dead code or dead store elimination. And future work on the compiler may include target specific optimizations based on target specific information or cost models that are specific to that particular target. Let's take a quick look at NetASM in action. In this short demonstration, I'll instantiate a NetASM data path on a POX switch with three virtual Ethernet interfaces. I'm first going to use the setup script to set up three virtual Ethernet pairs. Let's now start POX in standalone switch mode that specify a particular policy and give the switch three ports according to the virtual interfaces that we just created. Effectively, we've started a POC switch running a NetASM data path that acts as a hub. Let's run TCP dump on one of the switch ports, and then let's try to run a ping command through the switch. At this point, because we haven't set up a network topology, of course, the pings do not reply, but we can see the switch issuing ARP requests. Here's the NetASM policy that we just ran. Almost every program in NetASM starts by importing the NetASM core module. The code shown here, the code shown here is a tuple consisting of fields and instructions. In this case, the list of it, in this case, the list of instructions has a simple operation to XOR the input port bitmap with the port count bitmap value of all ones, and to store the result and the output port bitmap. Effectively, this operation tells the data plane to perform a flood. In summary, NetASM is a common intermediate representation for programmable data planes that enables a compiler to optimize a high-level packet processing program for a diversity of targets. It uses a target-independent machine model and cost semantics to optimize the program, which leads to better architectural realizations. Some future work includes completing the language specification for NetASM and exploring opportunities for optimizations that can be applied across different classes of network devices.